Have you wondered how fast Unify UNAS Pro actually is in real life situation? Everyone's making reviews about this NAS, but nobody actually talks about things that actually matters. In real life, what the performance is, how fast is file transfer, what's the maximum performance you can push this NAS to, how fast you can rebuild uh, raids and other things. We're going to be going through all these tests on this video to find out how fast Unify NAS actually is. So at the end of this video, we're going to find out what the score for UNAS Pro is and how does it compare with other NASs. Uh, this is going to be some sort of Top Gear NAS ranking system, uh, which will allow you to compare uh, different NASs, different performances, other you'll be able to look at individual performances or overall score which we can find out at the end of this video. So without long introduction we can move on to testing right now. Come on. So just in case if you didn't know how that NAS look like this is our UNAS Pro. This is the first ever NAS that's been created by Unify and obviously it has its pros and cons at this uh, development stage. Probably future models will be more exciting, more feature rich and faster. But at this point, this is what we have. So before we actually do the testing, I'll show you a few good things that it has. So it has touch screen uh, display, which will show you IP address, any errors or problems on your NAS. Uh, you can also shut down your NAS if you want to. And there are a few other things you, you can do. So you don't need to actually log into admin panel like you have to do with other NASs to configure or do uh, very simple things that uh, can be done from the front panel. So that's really great feature to have. One thing that is missing on this NAS is power on button. It can be very annoying if you uh, set scheduled tasks like automatic shutdown. You'll need to plug in the cable at the back for it to automatically start the booting process. So this is something that could be annoying. What's also great about it is the automated RAID function that it has. If you put in a blank drive in there, it will automatically set it in the RAID. Unless there is some sort of data on the drive, then you will need to go into admin panel and uh, confirm that you actually want to delete those files. But otherwise, it's really great tray design as well. There's no screws needed, there's no clips needed, nothing. You literally slot the drive in and you're ready to go. It takes a second to slot in the drive. Uh, SSDs, 2.5 inch drives are also supported, but those will need a few screws to fix them in a place. But otherwise, it's very simple tray. The best trays I've seen so far. It also has a Bluetooth built in, so all you need is your phone to set this thing up. You don't need to mess with NAS Finder applications, anything to do install. You get your phone up, you'll find a NAS, set it up, username, password, you're ready to go. Very easy compared to other NAS brands. And the last thing that I want to mention is the noise. There is no noise, it's so quiet. Come, I'll show you. So obviously there are a few things that are missing on this NAS, uh, but I made a pros and cons video, which I'm gonna upload later on. So you can see actual full breakdown of the things that are positive on this NAS and the things that are quite negative and they should work on or change things. So a few things that people are complaining about on forums is simple things like no support for uh, dry mixing, SHR kind of thing, or um, beyond RAID, what you would see on Drobo, that's missing. The other thing that you cannot have multiple RAIDs, obviously they want to simplify things, but some people would want to have SSD RAID and hard drive RAID. There's also no NVMe or any kind of even SATA based SSD caching. That's something also that is missing. So there's also no Docker support, so you can't turn this into multimedia NAS. Um, there's no USB port on this uh, NAS, so you can't back up from or to this NAS using external hard drives. There's also no expansion uh, slot, so you cannot stack a couple of these NASs together to have more storage space. You will need to have individual storage space for every single NAS. So maybe that's something for the future. Okay, let's move on to a first test, which is gonna be booting time. How long is gonna take for this NAS to boot? Because this is something important. Whenever you lose power, for example, how long is gonna take for people to get back 
to access. The quicker the OS can boot, that's a good indicator that the operating system is made very efficiently and you can use resources efficiently and the apps are not draining the CPU power. Also, when the reboot happens, people are waiting to gain the access to the NAS again to their SMB shares or logging into their uh, admin panel or their own uh, management panel. We're gonna find out on this uh, test how many seconds does it take or how many minutes it takes to actually boot uh, this NAS up to a point where SMB service is available and then how long it takes to gain access to admin panel itself. So let's find out how long it's gonna take to boot this thing up. Okay, now the booting started and let's see how long it's gonna take for the SMB to be available. And it takes one minute and 13 seconds for the SMB service to be available so people can start uploading files. So let's continue the booting uh, process and see how long it's gonna take for admin panel to be available. It's probably gonna take a little longer. Uh, and it took two minutes, 34 seconds. It's not too bad, not too bad for a booting. Okay, let's move on to a test number two, which is shutting down. How long it's gonna take for a NAS to shut down? So why is this important, the shutdown timing? Because when you plug it into UPS, you need to make sure that UPS have enough power to shut this thing down safely. Otherwise, if it runs out of power, the UPS, the files could be corrupted because of crash landing, the sh sudden shutdown, and uh, you don't want to have corrupt data or lost data. So the quicker it can shut down, the better. It's very important. I know other NAS brands that take minutes to shut down. Let's have a look how long it's gonna take on UNAS Pro. Let's shut this thing down. Okay, let's find the shut down button on the front panel um, and see how long it's gonna take to shut down. So the shutdown has started and it will take one minute, 15 seconds. That's a very good time for a shutdown. I think all the UPSs will cope with one minute timing for a shutdown process. It's really good. So let's move on to a next test. How long it's gonna take for it to build a RAID 1. So first of all, we're gonna put in there two SSDs. So it's gonna build a RAID 1 mirror because um, people are very curious how long it will take for me to be able to fully use this NAS. Because when you fill it with hard drives, especially really big hard drives, it could take a day or two days to build a RAID. In our case, to speed up this process, we're gonna use 480 gigabyte SATA SSDs. So let's start with RAID 1 building. Okay, let's start the process. And how long it's gonna to take to build these uh, RAID 1 mirror with two SSDs. Also, as I said, keep in mind that um, hard drives will take much longer to build a RAID. The bigger the hard drive, longer it takes. But with SSDs, it should be fairly quickly, especially with this small size. And yet we got the score is 39 minutes and six seconds. Now well, let's move on to RAID 5 building. How long is gonna take RAID 5? RAID 5, in our case, is using three uh, SATA hard drives. Um, so let's have a look how long it takes to build RAID 5. And that's 40 minutes and three seconds to build RAID 5. And the last test that we want to do is rebuild for the RAID 5. We're gonna remove second drive from RAID 5 and then put a brand new drive in there and see how long it actually takes to rebuild the RAID. And let's start the rebuild process. It should probably take very similar time to RAID 1, but uh, let's have a look. More data there is on the NAS, it also might affect the rebuild times. In our case, there is no data on any of the drives. So that's 38 minutes and eight seconds. That's a really good score for a rebuilding um, RAID 5. Okay, let's do some tests with file transfer speeds. So we are gonna fill this NAS with seven SSDs in RAID 10. 
to maximize the performance because we want to make sure it has the best setup possible to achieve the best speed. So we're going to be also connecting it through 10 gigabit port to the switch. Switch also has two 10 gigabit ports. So we're going to use one from the NAS to go into the switch and the other one coming out from the switch and it's going to be plugged into Mini's forum uh, mini PC, which is very powerful uh, PC. It's a really good CPU and it also has 10 gigabit ports. So we're going to be plugging this switch into a Mini's forum testing machine and we'll find out how long it's going to take to transfer 19 gigabyte file from a NAS to a mini PC and other way around from a PC to a NAS. So let's find out how long it's going to take. So now we have Windows in front of us, 19 gigabyte file, which we will be downloading first from a UNAS Pro to a Minis Forum PC. And you can see the speeds are pretty good, 7, 800 megabytes a second, it fluctuates. The total time is 28 seconds, not too bad for 19 gigabytes. So let's do the opposite test. We can upload 19 gigabytes to a NAS. The speed obviously for uploads is uh, slower, around 500 on average uh, in real time copy paste situation and it's 41 seconds. So now let's do 1.5 1 or 1500 megabyte uh, upload download test using this specific app. The total time for up and down is 44 seconds. Not too bad, not too bad. So in our next test, we'll find out how long it takes to transfer one gigabyte file from a NAS to a remote location. We're gonna be using a one gigabit bandwidth line on the source location and the destination location. So there shouldn't be any bottlenecks really. And let's find out how long it's gonna take. The transfer process is started. First it um, archives the file and then downloads and it takes two minutes, 32 seconds for one gigabyte file to be transferred to a remote location. It's not too bad. So this is it. We have gone through all the tests that I wanted. The next step is gonna be combining all these results into one number, one score, which uh, will be then used to compare other NASs if you want to see some more testing configuration and things like that about this UNAS Pro and 10 gigabit network setup in general, you can watch my full part uh, video series where I'm going through different RAID options, different cables, different um, hard drives, different number of hard drives, SSDs, uh, trying to find out how to maximize the performance of this NAS. What's the best setup? So you can go to my channel and find four part series uh, somewhere there. Otherwise also have a top ask questions video. You can check that out or you can see me going through the admin panel and how it looks and what my first impressions are about the Unify admin panel, user interface and things like that. So all those videos are available to you uh, on the Digipy channel. So go and have a look. Otherwise, let's have a look at final results how they look like and what their total score is. Come, I will show you. So final results are in. Let's have a look at the scores. So it took one minute, 13 seconds to boot uh, SMB service. It took two minutes, 34 for admin panel, one minute, 15 to shut down the NAS, 39 minutes to build RAID 1, 40 minutes to build RAID 5, 38 minutes to rebuild RAID 5, 41 seconds to transfer 19 gigabyte file uh, to a NAS and 28 seconds to download from a NAS, 44 seconds to upload and download 1500 megabytes using NPT uh, application and uploading or transferring one gigabyte file to a remote location using one gigabit bandwidth in the source and destination location took two minutes, 32 seconds and since we couldn't test USB, Thunderbolt, or any other external uh, connection for external hard drives, we were using our score from MPT app and put that in. 
assuming that if there is no external connection, the LAN it falls back down to a default option, which is LAN connection, and the fastest LAN speed that we were getting is through NPT app. So we're going to use that score from now on in different NAS tests as well. So it's fair and square. 44 seconds to do that. So our overall score to beat, it's going to be 2 hours, 7 minutes and 28 seconds. So this is a first score that we have achieved on our first test. In the future, we're going to be testing other NASes and that will allow us to understand is UNAS Pro better than other NASes or is it not? So stay tuned because soon those other test videos will be coming up. I hope you like this video. If you want to find out more about UNAS Pro, you can go to my channel and find those videos. Otherwise, um, you can follow and you'll see this kind of content coming up in the future if you're interested in. So stay tuned. See you later.